Okay, what we're going to do now is add something that goes in here, and that's going to be our register form. So what we'll do, we'll head back to VS Code. We'll open up the terminal once again, still inside the app folder. What we'll do is we'll create another component. So we'll say NGGC, and this one we'll just call register. And once again, we'll skip the tests and press return. And let's go and do what we need to do inside our register component. So we'll open up the component first of all. Now this is going to contain a form. So once again, we'll just give it a model and we'll give the model a type of any. And what we'll do inside our component is we'll just add a register method. So we'll say register. And all we'll do is we'll just console.log and we'll say list.model. Just to make sure we're getting things set up correctly. What we'll also do is we'll just add a cancel method inside here. And for the time being, because we I'll use this to demonstrate a different concept shortly, but we'll just add a console log and say cancelled inside there. And then what we want to do is go to our register component template. So we'll open this one up and we'll go to register component HTML. And this is going to contain our register form. So we'll create a form and let's make sure we get the Emmet abbreviation for form. And we don't need the action there, but our form is going to be an Angular template form. So once again, we need to add the template reference variable. We'll call it register form and we'll set this equal to ng form. And we'll give it an ng submit method and we'll set this equal to our register method. And once again, because it's annoying, if we don't do this, we'll turn off autocomplete as well. And what we'll do, we'll add an h2 tag and give it a class of text dash center and we'll say text dash primary for the coloring and we'll say sign up. We'll add a horizontal row and then we'll add a form group. So div dot form dash group. And this is bootstrap styling for our inputs. And we'll say inputs and we'll say inputs and we'll give this a class equal to form control. Once again, this is just a bootstrap class to style our input properties. And then what we want to do is give this a name. Anytime we use the ng model, which we will be using, we have to give our inputs a name. Please feel free to experiment with what happens if you forget to do this, because I guarantee you, you'll see an error. But Angular uses this name property to track what's being entered into the form. If you forget it, you'll definitely get an error. So then we'll say a-ng model and we'll say model.username and we'll give it a placeholder and just set this to username. And let's bring some of this stuff down to tidy it up. Now we need another input, so let's use the copy paste technique to do this. And we'll change the username to password and the placeholder will be password and the model.username is going to be model.password and then because it's a form we need buttons so what we'll do is we'll just say div.form-group and say text-center as a container for our buttons and then we'll say button and btn.btn-success and we'll give it some margin rights of two and we'll specify the type equal to submit and we'll say register and we'll copy this button down and we'll change its type to be a normal button so that when we use this it doesn't submit our form and we'll just say cancel and we'll give it a click event of the cancel and we'll just set this equal to cancel our method that we created earlier. So this is our form set up and complete. And what we need to do is go across to our home component template. And instead of this placeholder text, we'll pass in our app register components. And if we go take a look and see how we're doing, we'll keep our console open just to make sure that when we submit our form, we can see the details in there. We've got our little sign up form. And if I just put some junk in there, we should have made that a password field, but and we should make the cancel not the same color as the register. 
but we can see the values inside there which is good and let's just go and correct the password and the button color so if I just go back to the register component template one more time this is going to be default rather than success and the password needs to be a type of password of course and if we go back take a look click on register our cancel buttons better type in some rubbish for the username and password and that works successfully so before we hook up this functionality to the API what we're going to take the opportunity to look at is communication between components now that we have a few that can work together and we'll take a look at that next